Um, nice to meet you guys. Um, before we start, we're gonna all say my name correctly because it causes me anxiety. Um, so the phonetic spelling is probably incorrect, honestly, to be real. I talked to my whole entire family about it. We couldn't come up with a thing, so I just made it up. So you guys are gonna repeat after me. Um, Abna, ready? Abna. Oh my God, this is beautiful. Um, I love this. Okay, yes, so. I'm gonna to talk to you guys about anxiety. I thought that maybe you know we should talk about myself first, um, and then talk about anxiety and talk more about myself too. Um, so let's start, that's me. Um, I know, I'm cute. Uh, so I'm a Pisces sun, if you know what that means. Like I'm a little emotional. Um, you know, I get a lot of empathy, you know, all that type of stuff. So that's like my inner. I'm a Virgo rising, which basically means I present Beyonce. Um, if you didn't know, Beyonce is a Virgo. Um, so that's who I present all the time. Um, I'm a Scorpio moon, so the moon is all about how you interact with people. Um, and so I can be a little intense, but also really chilled back, and you're just like, what's going on? But I'm up front with you. Um, so combine all of that with being a former teacher, a grad student, and an owner of a small business, and being a black woman in America, I kind of know a lot about anxiety. Um, so that's why I'm here. Um, so basically, my friend Lauren, hit me up and she was like, hey girl, do you know about anxiety? And I was like, LOL, anxiety? Yeah, like, I talk about it, I like go through it, I manage it. Um, I got it, I can do this talk. So the, you know, the grad school student in me was like, let's talk about the DSM, let's talk about you know, what it means. And I was like, no, let's just talk about Google. Um, so basically anxiety, um, if you've ever had it before, Sometimes you might feel a little nervous, you might feel overwhelmed, your stomach might be feeling a little weird, like how I am right now a bit. Um, typically, it's something that is so overwhelming that it changes your daily life. Like, maybe you won't interact with someone, or maybe you won't do something. Um, so that's what Google said, and then I came up with my own little, you know, thing of what anxiety actually means. So to me, anxiety means something that disables your learning. I personally found that out as a grad student, um, actually administering therapy, um, and then realizing that I was having a lot of anxiety about how I administered therapy, and I was realizing that I wasn't able to actually learn as much as I was supposed to be learning. And that is something that actually goes along with all types of anxiety. When you have social anxiety, you're unable to actually interact with people, so that experience that you could learn from, you're unable to do that. You know what I mean? When you have test anxiety, you're unable to do the test that you're supposed to do the best way. Therefore, the learning that you're supposed to intake, you weren't able to do that. Can of get the picture here? You're unable to learn when you have a lot of anxiety, which is crazy because, I mean, you need to be learning. You need to be able to experience things. So when I was creating this thing, you know, a couple weeks ago, I saw on Twitter from our favorite uh, DJ. Do you guys know who Joe K is? Selection. Okay, thank you. Okay, I <laughs> see you back there. Okay, well, anyways, if you don't, you need to figure out who he is. He will probably help you manage your anxiety with the music that he has. But he tweeted this. He said, sometimes life is all about how you handle anxiety. So I was like, retweet, like, yes. Um, and then I was like, wait a minute. Every day, this sometimes, I don't know, like literally I am managing my anxiety. It's how I live my life is how I handle it. Because sometimes we look at anxiety of just like a disorder, but anxieties are these feelings that come about us. So I thought the best way 
to talk about this with you guys is kind of, of how my experience understanding my anxiety, learning about anxiety, and also just like helping other people manage it, the different themes that came up. Does that sound okay? Cool, because if it didn't, that's what we're going to do anyway. <laughs> um, so let's start. So I had to realize one thing. To understand your anxiety, you have to be honest with yourself about yourself. And that's the part that kind of gets a little crazy, because you're like, OK, I don't like this. I don't like that. I don't like that. But it's about the why. And sometimes the why has to do with trauma. Sometimes the why has to do with things that you usually don't want to explore. So no one really wants to be honest about themselves about it. But that's what I had to do to really tackle and learn about anxiety and also be able to talk to other people about anxiety. So we're going to go on a trip. Here's a picture of me and Ben. You guys are going to see a lot of pictures, so get used to it. Um, but here's a little picture of me and Ben, and we'll talk about Ghana later. So I had to start to learn about myself, right? I had to be honest with myself. And I started to realize, you know, talking to my therapist and all those great things and people, that anxiety for me shows up when I have an unbalanced and a pessimistic attention towards future things, OK? So here's the first story. Imagine, sixth grade me, OK? I wanted to be a neurosurgeon when I was younger, you guys. This was like pre-crazy Ben Carson. This is like when Ben Carson was like the black, you know, neuroscience that separated the Siamese twins and everything. Like, he was my hero. So I really wanted to be like him. So I was in my bed one day. I was reading my encyclopedia, because I obviously had one. Um, and I was like, oh my god, I want to be a neurosurgeon. Oh my gosh, I just have to go to high school. Oh my gosh, I got to go to college. Oh my god, I got to go to college. Oh my god, I got to go to college. And I just started freaking out about college as a sixth grader. That is wild. OK, that is really crazy. And I actually had a panic attack. And I didn't know at that time that it was a panic attack. So I ran to my mom's room, and she like prayed for me. And we're like, ah. And I went back to sleep. Um, you know? But as I started to do some reflecting and learning and looking at the themes of a lot of the things that causes me anxiety, I went back to this theme of being a sixth grader freaking out about being a neurosurgeon. Um, and realizing that a lot of my themes were around you know, the pessimistic, unbalanced attention towards a certain event instead of changing that thought process. So I had to kind of look at communication between myself, what I'm talking about, what's going on in my head. You know what I mean? Self-talk. If you're a psychologist, you might be like, oh my god, is that a DBT approach? None of you guys are, so it doesn't matter. Um, but yeah, no, it is an approach. It's an approach about what you're actually saying to yourself, which makes sense. Forget about everyone else. What are you talking about in your head? So as a teacher, this is one of my favorite students. Um, you took a photo shoot, don't worry. Um, so as a teacher, um, as a grad student, as an undergrad student, I was realizing that a lot of the themes of what I was telling myself was actually provoking all the action that I was giving out. So I had to really start to think about what was what the self-talk was happening, because I was also realizing that what self-talks were happening for other people, too. Because as you talk with other students, you're like, wait, why did you tell yourself that? What's going on? Why do you think you're this? Why do you think you're that? It was about what they were saying in their head. And I had to really start to think about, how was I talking to myself when something was going wrong? You know? So that was a theme. The next theme that like, really came up when I was doing my little self-discovery, I guess, about anxiety, was about self-worth. So everyone's big about self-love. Raise your hand if you use the word self-love in the past month. <laughs> Boo! Just kidding. I love it. Um, so yeah, self-love is great, right? But self-worth is actually, I think, more important. Because if you do have self-worth, you will give yourself self-love in general, because you're worthy of love. So, 2016, I started going to Black Girl and Ohm. Does anyone know who, what Black Girl and Ohm is? Yay. <laughs> I'll tell you. So Black Girl and Ohm is a space basically dedicated for black women and women of color to do yoga, breathe easy, enjoy life, talk about each other. And that was the first time where I was in a space of black women, one, all of us doing yoga, 
Two, all of us talking about how anxiety was wild, and like we were just connecting. It was a time where I was like, wait, you have anxiety? Or I have anxiety. Oh my God, you like don't like being a minority in spaces? I don't like being a minority in spaces. It was wild. We were just talking, and I was really realizing that I'm worthy of this type of experience all the time. I'm worthy of loving myself. I'm worthy of able to talk about anxiety. I'm worthy of like actually managing my anxiety. You know, because sometimes we're like, we have anxiety, and then you're like, I have anxiety, and you stop. But it's like, you're worthy of actually talking about that and going through it and being able to say, hey, I don't want to do this because of my anxiety, or I need to figure it out because of my anxiety. So I was really realizing the theme, like, I am worthy of understanding and managing my anxiety. I'm worthy of finding a black therapist and going to her and being able to talk to her. I'm worthy of being in spaces where I feel comfortable and being my actual true self. So, you know, I get that worthy. I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm doing self-talk. You know, I'm understanding what's causing me anxiety. I gotta start being really honest, though. You know, I have to start being honest because one, I'm a teacher, one, I'm a mentor, one, I'm a black woman, and I need to make sure that I'm being honest to other women around me to make them feel that it's not something crazy to feel all these types of experiences. So as you know, this is my little cousin, she's so cute. Um, but I, you know, I'm a sister, I'm a cousin, I'm a daughter, I'm all these things, and I had to start learning how to be honest with my family. Coming from a Ghanaian home, we don't really talk about anxiety a lot, you know. Um, it was one of those things, it was just we didn't really talk about it until like I was like, hey guys, I have anxiety, and they're like, oh, okay, whatever. But no, we had to start talking about it, you know, we I talked about it a lot with my brother, I was being honest, I was being honest with my family because when you're being honest with yourself, and you're going through this process of managing your own anxiety, you have to be honest with other people so then they actually understand that too. And the one thing about being honest and starting to be your true self is sometimes people start to fall off because they don't really understand this new you, quote, quote, um, but just you. And that was something that I had to also be honest with too. Like, okay, I gotta be honest with myself. This space is not good for me. I have to be honest with myself. These friends were good during this moment, but maybe not anymore. And that was something I had to go through. And I had to communicate that with others. So, like I said, I was a teacher. Um, and I don't know if any of you guys are teachers out here. Oh, yeah, okay, girl. Can I see you? Yes. So yeah, I was a teacher, um, and I was working with students of color. It was so beautiful. I was just out here living life. Um, but also, I was in a space that was quite toxic um, for being a teacher and being a teacher of color. Um, and I had to really learn how to communicate. Um, I had to start realizing what was going on that wasn't letting me actually learn more in the space that I was. I had to start being, again, honest with myself about what wasn't feeding me and what was. Um, so I really had to learn how to communicate with others. And I think anxiety is a lot about communicating with others because most of the time we don't even want to. It causes us so much anxiety that we don't actually want to put ourselves out there to talk about what's going on. And that's what I had to do. Um, and once I started learning how to communicate with others, and I still am learning, um, it was helping a lot. It was helping me just put across exactly what was going on and why I didn't want to be in this space or why I did or how to move along. And it was helping others realize how to connect with me too and communicate with me. Now, the last thing I learned when I was doing my little reflection was understanding the process. So I realize, and I think I'm gonna share this with you guys because it might help you too. Once I realized that everyone was on their own process and everyone was going through their own things, my anxiety towards people changed because someone could go off on me or do something and I was just like, ooh, you're just at your process, it's okay. <laughs> You're still figuring things out. Um, and I could just be like, it's fine. That's how you handle it. That's how I handle it. And it really made things a lot better. And I learned that through making shea butter. So I started making shea butter like four years ago before all this hype, um, just doing it. Yeah. I'm going to say it. <laughs> no. 
Um, but yeah, like, you know, I'm Ghanaian, my mom made shea butter, so I was like, run through the family. Um, but, no, so I started making shea butter, and I don't know if you guys know about shea butter, but it's a process. So I just knew about my process of making it, melting it down, all that type of stuff. But um, as I kept on making it, and then I decided to make a business, um, I really wanted to learn about the woman behind shea butter, the woman that were making the raw shea butter before I made it. So really learning about that process was so wild for me because I was like, whoa, these people go through this process just to make this beautiful thing that everyone uses on their skin, even if you don't know you do. That means that if they have to go through this process, everyone has to go through a process. So I thought I would share with you the process of making shea butter, is that okay? Yeah, okay, good. Um, so we're gonna do that. So I went back to Ghana um, last year. Yeah, last year the first time and met actually with the Katarga Women's Group, who is the group of women that create raw shea butter that I use in my products. So there's a lot of women's groups, just for you guys to know, they're not the only ones, but. <laughs> And then this is they'll, the oil. They'll be removing the dirt. Oh. The dirty ones. The dirty ones will come up. Okay. And they'll remove it. And this is the dirty one. Come mm. on, mm. Just a second. Um, but yeah, that's a process, right? <laughs> I see some of you guys shaking your head. Yes, yeah, so that's a process. And I had a chance to go back um, last summer and actually meet these women and work with them and learn about the process. And during that time when I was in Ghana was a really like amazing time for me because I was realizing a lot of different things about myself. I was realizing that I could actually focus on a lot of the things that were actually causing me anxiety because one of the biggest things that caused anxiety was gone. And one of the biggest things that causes me anxiety that I didn't even realize was actually being a minority in spaces. Um, and that was huge, because I like came to Ghana and I was like, 
Whoa. Everyone looks like me. Everyone can speak the language that I can speak to. Because I can speak two languages. I'm cool. Um, but yeah. <laughs> so it was great. And that was fun, right? But then the thing that really got me was that I was sitting in a car, hanging out with my cousin, right? We're like all chilling, whatever. And then like a cop car came by, and I was like, Ch -ch -ch -ch. Nervous. <laughs> Literally, that's just like the motion that I got. And everyone else was like, chillin' and vibin'. And I was like, whoa, why are you guys super chill? What's going on? Like, no one even talked about the siren. No one cared about the siren. No one looked back. And I'm not saying there's no policing problems in Ghana or anything like that. But there was no fear that just automatically came up because of all of the things that we experienced here in the United States. Um, that I had to even think about fear. And the fact that, you know, that is something natural that came to me, it realized that this was a really big problem. And when I didn't have that even thinking about that fear or having to dwell on that or think about like, you know, fatal endings, which is wild, right? Like that's something that might go through someone's head every day when they see a cop car, you don't know. Um, was allowing me to have the chance to focus on other things. I was able to actually like open up myself to other stuff and come back to the U.S. and use that too and realize maybe, you know, this might not be the best place for me. Maybe I need to be doing other things in other places. So I went back to Ghana <laughs> this December because I was like, yo girl, it's time. Um, so I went back and I actually put on an exhibition. And when I was there, uh, oh, no. okay, cool. When I was there, I was in a situation where like, I should have been extremely calm. I was like vibing. I was having a good time. I was around good people. I was around good looking people. Um, it was great. It was really great. And um, during that moment when I was supposed to be feeling extremely calm, I was actually freaking out inside. And luckily, I had my little journal with me. Um, actually, no, I didn't. I had a French journal with me. And because I was like, yo, everyone else is super chill and I'm not, maybe I should write down and remember how I actually calm myself. And this is something that I've used with some of my clients. Um, and we kind of just map it out. And the thing is, like, you know, I don't know if you guys ever been in a space where you tell people to do things, and then when it's your turn to do it, you're like, not me that. Um, that was me. <laughs> so I decided to do it. And um, so I kind of wrote out a thing of how to calm my mind. So I don't know, this is Malik Barry. Um, he's not my boyfriend. Um, he's a musician. But one of the things that actually calms my mind is dancing in the mirror like 30 minutes every morning to Malik Barry. So I thought I should put him up there. So the first step of calming your mind is to breathe because sometimes we forget to breathe. So why don't we all just take a deep breath together in. Oh my God, that was beautiful. Okay, now let's go down this left. So the next thing that I did, I had to remind myself that I could be calm. Okay, because sometimes when we're going through this, like, you know, when you feel the angst and you're like, oh my God, I'm about to freak out. You're like not thinking about the fact that you can actually be calm. So this is where self-talk comes in. Um, so I had to start talking to myself about what makes me feel calm. Sometimes it's like, hey girl, relax. That might be the only self-talk I need. Sometimes that doesn't work out, you know what I mean? So then I have to breathe again and maybe repeat or try something else. Maybe I have to start thinking of something funny and I'm just like LOL anxiety and maybe that doesn't work, okay? <laughs> but I breathe. The next thing is talk to God. Now, not everyone wants a high dog. Um, <laughs> didn't see it there. Um, hey, cute, real cute. Um, so, <laughs> so yes, the next step I would say is talk to God. Now, um, you know, I think she's amazing. She's really great. She's like my homie up there. You don't have to think she's amazing. It's okay, but you can talk to whoever. You can talk to your crystals. You can talk to your plants. I talk to them too. Um, but you can pick whatever you have some type of faith in. You know, and I'm not saying you have to go kneel down and pray. I'm not saying all that, because most of the time I'll be talking to her like when I'm walking down the street, when someone's acting crazy around me. Um, but yeah, talk to, like, you know, it might be a friend, maybe someone that's in your near space, or maybe it's just another powerful self-talk that you feel like you're talking to someone else. 
and then breathe again. Through this, you'll see breathe a lot because sometimes we forget when we are actually feeling extremely anxious to take those deep breaths and calm down because we feel like everything has to go at a really fast pace. And just reminding yourself to breathe allows you to take a seat back. So the last thing, not the last thing, sorry. The, last, um, the next thing is remember what makes you feel good. So most of the time when we're in an anxious situation, we're just thinking about how to like tackle it and we don't think about the things that actually make us feel good in that space. And this is a dialogue that you can have with yourself about, hey, do I need to be in this? Yes, you do. Okay, how can I manage? Do I need to be in this? No, you don't. Okay, I'm out of this. You know, it's one of those simple things and actually having that conversation with yourself. Um, so remembering what makes you feel good, you know, and actually breathe and then start to actually go through that process of feeling good. So for you to feel good, you actually got to do those things. We know a lot of the times what makes us feel good. We know a lot of times what we shouldn't do or what we should do, but we just don't actually do it. So that's what we got to do. When I came back from Ghana in August, I realized when I was here that what was really making me feel good was actually being in Ghana and making sure I was consistently going back. So then I had to buy a ticket and I did it. And that's a big jump. You guys all don't need to go to Ghana. Seriously, you don't have to. Um, but you know, that's just an example. Um, so I did. Um, and you know, you have to make sure you do what makes you feel good, and you have to give yourself the authority to make that choice. Sometimes we forget that we actually have the authority over our body to do things, and that that is given to us. God gives us that authority. I learned that a lot from my friends. That you have that authority to do it. And then you realize it's actually a process. You know, you're at a process. You're in a step in the process. You're doing all these different things. So you have to give yourself some, you know, be nice to yourself. It's okay. If this whole thing doesn't work out, you just go back and you start again. Um, so I did. So I went back, like I said, to Ghana. Um, and it was really amazing. I did an exhibition. And um, all the pictures and that video, I was able to show the process to a lot of people. And I wanted to make sure it started in Ghana because I wanted people in Ghana to first see it before I showcased it anywhere else. So I had a chance to do that. And the best thing about it was being able to go back to the Katarga women and actually giving them their pictures. So I had a chance to give them their pictures, like the small ones. And I had a chance to give them the huge ones. And they got to take it back in their homes. And Oh, it was beautiful. Like, I was like crying inside because I don't show emotion outside, like I told you. I'm a Scorpio, Virgo, all this stuff. It's a lot. Um, but it was beautiful. I got to take my, like, two of my really good friends with me to experience and learn. I was able to basically curate a learning experience. Um, I was able to do that. So I wanted to show you guys it's just a short video. It's like literally 13 seconds um, of some of the women actually getting back their pictures, and it sh gave me a lot of joy, so I thought I would share that joy with you guys, too. It's you. <laughs> so, super short, like I told you, 13 seconds. But, um, I know you didn't understand what they were saying, I didn't understand what they were saying. We were speaking a different language. But that joy and that emotion and all those things around was just so beautiful. And I realized during that moment, though, it was super simple. It was just giving a picture back to someone. It was just showing someone respect. It was just talking to them. You know, like if someone took your picture and was like, you're never going to see it again, you'd be like, why? So why should we do that when we go other places? You know, like, Sh bye. <laughs> I'm going to show all my millions of friends and you're never going to get it. Weird. Um, so <laughs> um, it was simple. And that was the thing. That's a theme. Like, sometimes we just overthink this. Sometimes we have an unbalanced attention towards things. Sometimes we are super pessimistic about something. And we're not real. And we make it way more complex than it is. So that is why when someone asks me about anxiety, I'm like, ha, ah, ha, ha, anxiety. Um, but yeah, I mean, sometimes it's not that simple, too. Um, and sometimes it can be a disorder. Sometimes you have a lot of things and you can go to you know, your nearby therapist. I'm going to say if you are a woman of color and you are looking for a woman of color therapist, 
you can come talk to me after. I'm not gonna be it, but <laughs> I'm gonna tell you about some people. Um, and if you are looking for therapists in general, like there's a lot of people around here that do that. Um, and you know, Psychology Today has a lot of information. You can literally search someone up. Um, talk to your friends. Um, if you feel like you are a really anxious person and you think you're the only person going through it, you're not. Uh, I am. <laughs> um, but talk to people. Find people that you feel like you can be honest and have honest conversations. People that are worthy of your time. And um, yeah, that's my talk on anxiety. And that's it. <laughs>